Hi, kitty cats. I am Amethyst Herrick, your hostess for Gender Identity Weekly, a weekly discussion about identity and gender from the contributors and guests of the Purple Paw Publications website, Gender Identity Today. This content is brought to you by subscribers of Gender Identity Today. If you are already a subscriber, thank you very much. If you would like to support shows just like this one, as well as other content by our contributors and by me, please consider subscribing using the links you're going to find in the show notes. So today I have a very good friend of mine uh, with me, Doro. She is, uh, I know Doro through Medium. Doro, first of all, thank you very much for joining me. You're welcome. So Doro is a transgender woman and very highly respected uh, writer on Medium, or at least very highly respected by me. Um, we, I started reading your work, and I know we commented back and forth um, mm -hmm. a couple of times. And, you know, I like to think that we, that we formed a friendship. That's true. Good. I was hoping you weren't going to say I was wrong. Because <laughs> um, you never know. I, I don't like playing that card, but, you know, Sometimes I got to be given a, a talking to. So um, the reason why I wanted to make this video today, we were going to, it's somewhat of a sober topic. It's the, the transgender experience in Turkey. And just as sort of a lead in here, in the United States, my experience as journaled in, in my, own, um, my own work, writing work, my experience has not been 100% pleasant. You know, there is some discrimination. Um, obviously, there's some hate going on and, and ongoing legislation. And many of us in the United States think this is really awful, and, and I'm not trying to diminish that. But if you read Doro's stories and her friend's stories, um, I think it's very important that the world hears these stories as well. Um, you can probably tell there is there is no video um, because Dora would like to maintain her anonymity for her safety. And, and I think that sort of sets the tone of, of what we're going to be talking about here. So, uh, Doro, if you could, if you don't mind, um, could you just sort of give, I mean, a broad overview of the treatment of transgender people? Um, as, as you experienced it, um, can we kind of start off with, with just like growing up? I mean, what's it like growing up transgender in Turkey? Well, my own experience of, I didn't grow up for most of my life in Turkey, but okay. I grew up in countries that were still, um, don't recognize trans people as human beings. Um, oh my gosh! Deep as human of, beings. Some well, in some countries, you know, um, uh, like Ukraine or Russia or Georgia, there is deep um, hatred. So I guess my experience is very similar. Mm. Um, I know a lot of friends of mine from personal experience. Uh, as soon as they came out, they were um, made homeless or disowned, yes. or um, it, because in cultures like in Turkey, it is seen as as if the parents have done something wrong. They have haven't raised their child properly, or they are um, not competent parents. Mm -hmm. And so what they want to do, and that's kind of like the honor system in Turkey is like, if you, uh, if you do something bad, it reflects on everybody else. So if being transgender is seen as bad, that is a reflection of the family and not just the individual. I see. And, and so immediately they want to get rid of problems, you see, mm -hmm. so they will distance themselves as far away from you. So I think to come out as trans in Turkey specifically is kind of, um, it is very brave. Um, yes. 
because it is dangerous. Yeah, it is dangerous, but I was also I was also very lucky because my experience is coming out is different from most of the people I know. Right. Who, who came out my parents were um on the whole very accepting meaning that I could be whatever I wanted within my home, but when mm. I left the home, I couldn't be that person. I couldn't be who I was anymore. I see. Because my parents were fully aware of what the outside world would think of me. Right. You know, I hope that kind of gives you a brief overview. By, by and large, it is hostile. I see. It, mm-hmm. And and uh, I mean the, there is an excellent story um, written written by Gulia, and I believe she she is a good friend of yours, correct? Mm-hmm. She okay. Is. All right. So I will link both your uh, medium page and Gulia's um, medium mm-hmm. medium page, but she she had a story about when she came out to her parents. I, I believe as her uh. mother just said, "Get out of my house." Mm-hmm. And uh, she was immediately her, homeless. Her story is probably a better reflection of what mm-hmm. it is to come out in Turkey than my own story. Right. It's probably more of the general response uh, families have. Mm-hmm. But I know that she was only maybe 14 or 15 oh, when, gosh. when her parents were... I, I think her mother, um, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think her mother, like, laughed at her and just, yes. like, laughed as, 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 as she was uh, kicking her out. Yes. Um, I think that's... And I know her mother still laughs at her. Uh, like, her mother will see her in the street and just laugh at her. Oh, you my know? gosh. She's... Oh, my gosh. Yeah, but they li- they live within two blocks of one another, so it's that's heartbreaking, honestly. Um, so I know here in the United States, um, my healthcare, especially uh, gender affirming care, is is under is under attack. Where I am, not not so much. I want to say you made a comment. Uh, let me just ask the question: Is it possible to get gender affirming care? Not really. Not really. Um, I suppose if you are privileged and you have money, you can. Okay. Turkey Turkey is a, a kind of like a healthcare center. So it is like people will go for loads of cosmetic procedures Mm. and you can get certain cosmetic procedures, you know, uh, feminization, you know, facial feminization and things like that. But bottom surgery, um, top, uh, no, breast augmentation, no, you have to go abroad, You, you have to go abroad. Um, things like HRT is kind of... I was going to ask that, yeah. Is kind of... Um, it's almost black market, kind of okay. like... It's, it's not illegal, but you can't really get it through um, ordinary means. So your healthcare provider won't do that for you. But almost, okay. it's it's made to feel like uh, you're a drug dealer. You see. Sure. That's uh, it. Sounds kind of a harsh term, but it it's the truth. You know, you, you we have to go to um to somebody to buy it from them, and usually it's a lot more expensive. Um, yeah, it's we don't have we don't have kind of. We don't have any gender affirming care provided by the state or any healthcare providers. Not really. Yeah. Mm. What a. I mean. I I don't. There there. Are, I mean. There's a whole lot more. 
around transitioning gender as well. I mean, like, you know, my, my identification cards now say Amethysta on them. I mean, do, are you able to get identification cards that, that represent your, your real name, your real gender? No. Ugh. No. So what do you... It's, passports? It's, nothing? I'm different because my, my Turkish passport it has my name okay. that was assigned to me at birth. Mm -hmm. um, but my passport for European Union has yeah. my name now. Okay. So, but I think in the eyes of the Turkish government, you are born the gender that you were born and you will die the gender sure. that you were born and the name that you are given by your parents is the name that you will always have. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. You don't, you don't really exist. No. I mean, this they, is, you... the, the, we are, um, there used to be a time in Turkey where broadly speaking, um, LGBT, Q, IA, plus, all that kind of thing was kind of more accepted. There was a more moderate ab attitude from government where this, um, where they didn't like it, but they, they weren't gonna, you know, they weren't gonna interfere because mm -hmm. their attitude was, it's not really their business. Mm -hmm. But now, um, our government is more Islamist, more um, conservative. Yeah. Has been for almost 20 years. Okay. So their attitude is, is in, you know, there was a politician who I won't name who said there are no gay people, there are no trans people, there are no lesbians in Turkey. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, um, who... And they often, in official documents, they will, they will call us freaks. They they don't call us trans people. They just said that. Wait, in, in official documents, like in government. Official, in government documents, Oof. yeah. I've seen I've seen pictures of government documents where they they will use the term freak. Oh my, oh. <laughs> it, 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 they um. <sighs> It's hard to, it's hard to tell somebody who is from, you know, the West, that, because because I, I realize in America that a lot of politicians, especially on the right, are thinking these words, but they don't say them, you know. It, they they don't go into official documents. They'll say them. <laughs> yeah. But but though you know it's in private quarters. Yeah, exactly. And but here a politician will go on an interview, and they will say that the word. They will say freak. Yeah. Or the, you know. And it goes on to like employment as well because. Okay. Society. They don't want companies or. Um, the public sector or the private sector to give us jobs. Sure. Um, they, they are, um, they stop, they stop us from employment and because we are not able to get employment, they will we are forced into doing other things, which makes us feel like criminals. So by being of trans, course. you're automatically made to feel like a criminal because you're doing things to survive that are outside of the law. Right, right. You know? So it, it, the whole thing is cis. They can't penalize us for, they can't arrest us for being trans, but they can arrest us because of the position that they have put us in. You okay. see, do, does that make sense? It, it does. I was I was going to ask that if if actually just being part of the community was an arrestable offense, but I understand what you're saying. It's not arrestable. I wanted, yeah, 
but but finding housing is very difficult i think you mentioned mm -hmm. and and employment i mean it's difficult even just to find any kind of a job i think the people i know who are who have actual um position are in jobs like housekeeping or okay. cleaners you know so they will they will have though and it really does depend on who you're working for like it's mm -hmm. most people won't accept you but you might find somebody who say yes you can be cleaner yes you can be sure you can be made yes you can do this but you won't ever have a high paying uh progressive job where you can progress there's no uh, career ladder career path i see for yeah. any of us so and i i want to i believe you you told me this in private so do, may i ask um mm -hmm. about your education i mean i believe you i mean you've you've got a good education i believe you said yeah i'm university educated i have three degrees okay. Yeah, master's degree, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And, and so, you find it difficult to find employment? Yeah. In Turkey, yeah. It, it, um, it has absolutely nothing to do with being underqualified. I'm sure. It, it, it has everything to do with being who I am. And yes. Uh, so, so what happens if I go for a job? Um, I mean, it's it sounds it sounds like you get well. Actually, yes. Let's answer that question. What happens if you go for a job? If I go for a job, I will probably get an interview. As soon as I go through an interview, I won't get, I won't I won't pass the interview. Okay. So even if I give a good interview. An interview that would, if 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 um, anybody else gave that interview, they'd get the job. But because yeah. of me, it doesn't work. I I years ago I started trying to do that, and then after a while I was just I I can't be bothered anymore. There's no point. Right, because I assume you present with identification that that shows mm. you know an old life and a and, and non-existent life and and it's, it's a very good point because that's a dehumanizing aspect so yeah say you you put your name on the resume and then you have to provide your identification the two names don't align so all of a sudden right. they'll say they'll know it instantly even if they don't employ you, even if they don't employ you on the fact that you're transgendered, they won't employ you because you've given them inconsistent information. And I refuse to give give somebody that I'm not, you know, on a right. resume. So yeah, yeah. So what are so what are the options then? I mean, if you if you cannot find a job, what are the options? left sex work okay and that is that is the that is what most of us most of us do that it, it is to survive it's the only only way forward yeah in turkey anyway i i, I saw some statistics mm -hmm. um and i want I'm, i want to return to to you in one quick sec I I saw um, some statistics because what you've presented is horrific. I I originally found these statistics. It um, I found that more than twenty five percent of transgender people in the United States had lost a job for for their gender presentation. Seventy five percent of of transgender people experience some kind of discrimination. Mm. Not to the level that I think you're talking about. 
um, the, the rates of unemployment and poverty are, are mm -hmm. high in our community. Mm -hmm. but, but there, I mean, of, of the statistics I found, I saw somewhere between 13 and, and maybe up to 20 percent um, turn to sex work at some point in their lives. And so I wanted to, to throw those statistics out there because I want to I want to confirm you said almost all of, of our community in Turkey. Yeah, I would say that out of in, in speaking only in Istanbul for mm -hmm. me, the trans community in Istanbul, I don't know one trans woman who hasn't been in sex work at some point. Or still is. It is just inevitable that they have at some point. And that is partly because we are fetishized mm. in in Turkey. So here's here's the the interesting um, paradox that has been known for a long time. It's age old. Mm -hmm. So you get very, very deeply transphobic men picking up trans women to have sex right. with them. Right. And those women who haven't completely transitioned are, are making a lot of money because of that. Mm -hmm. You know, and because of that money, like, I'm, I'm gonna speak, speak frankly, because I don't, you know, I, I'm just gonna say it how it is. If you have, if you, if you have a dick, you're gonna make a lot of money. And that's, they do so well because they have a dick. And that's an interesting um, question, because Turkey hates us, but they also love us at the same time. Of course, of course. I, I want to say to I th believe you told me this. The um, so sex workers, there, there's, it's organized. I believe. I mean, sorry. Let me let me rephrase that. Cisgender sex workers. There's actual organization, healthcare. Um, it was, did I get that right? I think you mentioned that. I think so. I think, I don't really know many cisgendered sex workers. Okay. Okay. Um, then, then maybe I saw that on a, on a website somewhere. Yeah. Because I believe there's, it's, it's just recognized as a profession, which incidentally, I completely, I believe it should be. Mm -hmm. Be because then you can get some health care and you can maybe get some traceability of mm. the weird people who come by and, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, act weird. So maybe you get some physical pro uh, physical protection. But I'm, I'm, I'm guessing from your status, from your story, that's not the case. You, you don't have any physical protection. I have... Um, I have a man who looks after me. Mm. I mean, in, in in probably Western terms, it would be called a pimp. Mm -hmm. But I have a man who looks after me and about five other women who gives us free condoms, who, who wants to know who we're with and where we are at all times. Good. Okay. In terms of like, we have to have our location settings on our phone turned on. Good. So he, he will look after us, and he will. Um, generally, I think the perception is is that he he uh, the perception of somebody who does that is is someone who is controlling, coercive, and violent. Yes. But really, I think through him, although his behaviors haven't always been stellar, and they haven't always been particularly good, he doesn't take a lot of percentage of my earning of the night. He lets me keep most of it. 
he gives me free condoms. He pays for my health care. He's also the person who gives me a HRT. Okay. You know, good. So, so, and if something happens to me, he finds out who it is and he deals with it. You know, and that's, I'd rather have somebody who, it sounds quite sad to even say that, but I'd rather have somebody who um, looks after me 95% of the time and 5% of the time doesn't and isn't very nice to me. Yeah. Does, does that make sense? It's it it does completely. It it's not sad at all. I mean, any protection is better than none. Exactly. Because there are people here who come down who come down to so so I guess I'll run through it. So if somebody drives down Tarlabashi Boulevard, which is where we all work, if somebody drives down there, if you get into a car or you meet somebody if you get into a car you you take down number plate mm. and then you send a co- copy of that number plate and leave your location settings on so I know where you are at all times right, right. but <sighs> But there are people who who drive down there, and their specific purpose is to hurt us. They're not interested in sex. They're not interested in interested in in um, some kind of exchange. They're not. They just they they want to kill us. And usually, you can tell who it is, you know. But yeah, and, I, and I, not always. Not always, no. Uh, actually, Gulia had a good friend who was also a friend of mine. Not as good as she was with Gulia, but they lived together, and her name is Henda Kader. And she was, um, she was a young girl who. Who li- who came from the eastern part of Turkey, but moved to Istanbul, and in twenty fifteen, for the first time, um, the Turkish government banned Pride across Istanbul. It wasn't allowed to happen, mm-hmm. but people went anyway, and she was at the front of it. Handa was at the front of it. She got a rubber bullet shot into the chest hit with holes, hit by police, arrested, released. But she was on newspaper covers all over the world, and it was the first time uh, trans women in Turkey kind of had a, a voice, you know, that the people recognized and, and seen. So anyway, she was a sex worker too. And what happened was, is that she was taken... She got in the car and she was taken to the outskirts of Istanbul where she was killed, burned and raped. And the police were and still are nonchalant about it. They're not really, it's okay. Un- unconcerned, yeah. Does it? I think uh, her friend went to the police station and demanded to know what the investigation was. And the police said, man, it doesn't really matter in those words. People die every day in Istanbul. What do you want from us? Sure. You know, and but that's what I'm saying is that you can be have a voice, you can have presence, you can have um the term is clout, you know, you can have this kind of voice. Yeah. But you can die here and nobody will do nothing. You know, and I've probably gone way off topic. I apologize. No, not at all. Um, Gulli actually um, wrote a story about her that, mm-hmm. that, uh, that you know, if you're interested in reading more about this, um, like I said, there will be a link in the show notes. Um, uh, I wish yeah. I could apologize for, like, the human race. You don't need to. <sighs> It's, 
so <sighs> and forgive me I, I, I want to try to I'm sorry that is such a horrific story Th there's um, there's a, a, a an attitude I guess uh, at least that I've heard in the United States um, in, in you know some of my limit, limited understanding of the globe mm -hmm. and and the the attitude goes kind of like this wow that sounds terrible so just move away um, well your your laugh I guess it, it is half of the answer there I mean is is that even possible is I mean presumably that's misguided is is it possible to get away would you would you do that um, I in theory I guess you could I mean I could um, you could I could personally of, if I, yeah but I I think to use Gulier as an example I don't think she could you know and she is um, I don't know I don't know how to explain it um, the way that you earn money here and what it goes on to survive means that you cannot save any money. It means that you sure. work, you work every day almost. Mm -hmm. um, your landlord will take money. Your pimp will take money. Right. Your money goes on HRT. Your money goes on food. Your money goes on the. So, it's an endless cycle of just not being able to escape what is happening because you're fighting yeah. between wanting to be the the woman that you deserve to be and you're fighting between staying alive and escape seems improbable for many people but one of the, the, I'm sorry, sorry go ahead. no go ahead um, no Please go ahead. One of one of the biggest, I guess, things for me is that yes, I could leave, and people will say, "Well, why don't you just leave?" Like you said. But then, I don't think I've really experienced um, community like this. Yeah. Where, you know. It is not just like a certain section of us are under attack. No, it's like all of us are under attack. And so the solidarity that is between us all is, I've not experienced anywhere else, mm -hmm. you know, because there's not, there's not that threat. There, there wasn't that threat in England. There wasn't really that threat in Georgia. Not so much as here. So you in 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 a sense you kind of you become addicted to the solidarity because you've not had it anywhere else you know and right i've never felt in in a world that in a country that absolutely hates me and wants to um and I say it frankly, it wants to cleanse a country of people like me. Yeah. I've never felt so much love from from people here, from my sisters here. In your your community, yeah. Yeah, never. Yeah. You know, never felt like this. Never felt accepted or encouraged or. In a sense, like almost revered because I'm quite, I'm considerably older than a lot of the people, a lot of the people in the community. So, revered kind of is a bit of an egotistic word, 
but to have some kind of leadership and to lead somebody and to inspire somebody it's 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 a good feeling right and, and so so getting away would mean leaving your community leaving people behind mm -hmm. and i don't want to do that because i have kind of this feeling that if i left then for whatever reason my friends would die yeah. it's not true it's it's a rational fear but if you if you look at it like this if i left and then somebody died or somebody was killed i don't think i could i don't think i could live with myself you know i i just don't think that that could happen yeah is there is can you i don't know that i want to use this term are you able to to fight back in any way Against or is who? it too dangerous against the government um right <laughs> Are you talking? Are you, is that what you're asking? Am I able to? Yes. No. I mean, that's that's pretty. Yes. Is there any way from within that you can do anything, or are you pretty well trapped? I think the situation for almost everybody in Turkey, not just trans trans people, mm. okay. um, is that while you can protest that kind of window to be able to protest is closing very, very, very slowly. I see. So, if you protest, you get arrested. You, you might go to prison, you might not. But at the end of the day, you will always be on record as being somebody who has been dissent, dissentful towards the government. Sure, so, sure. Qu quite... What happen, What happens in Turkey is, is that you can be walking down the street. Now, it's worth noting that the police don't come into the area that I live in. They'll never come because it just breaks out into, ironically, a riot. But if you walk anywhere in Turkey, anywhere in a touristy area in Istanbul, the police will stop you and they'll ask you for an identity card. As soon as I give the identity card, they know that I'm a trans woman sure. but not only that if i've done if i've protested before they will look through their records and they'll know that i'm a protester or i've been a dissentful voice mm. so the process going forward after that meeting is a lot more complicated for me than it is anybody else because i'd be subject to a search by men not by women by men subject to a search and humiliated all in the name of uh, public quote-unquote interest of course so um so the window to to fight back against the government which is has become authoritarian we've had the same leader for 20 years that's not mm. that's not how democracy works even if you're a good mm. leader democratically speaking even if you're a good leader you will not have a 20 year tenure just because no. politics doesn't work like that right so um i have to be very careful because criticizing the turkish state is illegal um, understood so by and large i'm very happy with <laughs> with, with what they're doing no i'm not but of course. Um, so that's inside from within the system. Mm -hmm. Is there any way, I don't know, say I could fight back, could help the community in some way? I think you're that you already know of? I think you're already doing it. You, how how giving... about more? I'm sorry, I cut you off. I, I. No, you didn't. It's okay. Um... No, I did. Um... 
I don't, um, I feel very helpless. Um, I would imagine many of the people listening will feel helpless. I wish there was something I, I could do. I wish there was a lot more that I could do. Um, just, no, honestly, I think, I think that by giving us a platform, a platform that we don't have in Turkey, it, it is, it is worth more than gold. Because I couldn't, I couldn't have this conversation. I couldn't stand in Taksim Square or walk through a street in Turkey and protest and say, mm. I mean, I mean, I could, I can protest, but the repercussions are too much. So it's kind of this, right. this is, this is, um, unadulterated, uninhibited, I'm not being censored. Right. But in Turkey, the illusion of freedom to protest is still there. But you can't really say what you want to say because, as I said, they'll arrest you because there's all these little kind of niche laws that are in place that it will kind of entrap you if you say something, you know. So yeah. if, if I criticize, say I'm in a bar and I criticize the president, someone overhears me they report me to police i can be arrested for criticizing the turkish state mm -hmm. so um being able to speak freely here is is good having a degree of anonymity i, I don't know if i pronounced it properly but yes yeah um having having that kind of freedom to talk is is it's a breath of fresh air it's really refreshing it's it's um yeah that's what you do for us and that's that is amazing and i thank you sure um i am gonna do what i can to uh to to distribute this I, I there are people i know you know hopefully will will continue to distribute this um i i want um i want your story told and i want your story heard and and i i i want to i want to make sure that things are are better in the future i, I think that as long as we continue to exist which we have done for thousands of years. Right. They, as much as they don't want to see us, they're going to have to see us and they're going to have to deal with it and they're going to have to learn to love it. Because you can say what you want about us. It doesn't, it doesn't get rid of us. It doesn't mean we're not here. It, it might hurt. It might hurt me. It might hurt you. But that doesn't mean it doesn't fucking mean, excuse my language, that doesn't mean that... Do it. It yeah. doesn't, doesn't fucking mean that we're going anywhere. Like, so you have to... And... I often think, like, what? What did I do to you? Like, how did I, how yeah. did I hurt, how did I hurt you? you Just know, being who you are. Yeah. Exactly. It's different to the status quo that they love so much, you know, but yeah, I'm still happy. I am in awe of your bravery and, um, and I, I will just say thank you for, for telling your story here you know um and i guess for for just continuing to to be who you are you you are inspirational to to many of us believe me and so are you thank you you're inspirational um, all right <laughs> thank you you're I welcome feel very small like 
think so. I, I, uh, um, why do you, why do you feel, why do you feel small? Cause this feels like such a huge problem. I, I mean, I can't, from where I, where I am, I cannot conceive of a, a community so reviled and I'm in it. I mean, but I'm in it in a way that's, that's, I, I don't, like, am I going to get arrested for being who I am? I you, think I could get pretty angry right now, <laughs> right now. So maybe I don't want to. But, but maybe, but because our problems are, might be more severe or we might have more immediate problems, it doesn't mean that trans women across the world should not be figuring out all of these problems together as one solid community, as one solid right. network. In, You're right. Like, I know at times I've been guilty of saying to people from the West, oh, you don't understand, you don't know, you haven't got problems. Like, yes, you do have problems. Like, but because I'm so knee high in my own, in, in the shit that I wade through every day. Right. Like, I just, at times I'm guilty of not seeing the struggles of other people. And that's on me to learn and to, to say, you know, like we should be together in solidarity, all of us. Which is why it pains me so much. It pains me so much to see so much infighting all of the time. And nothing gets done if we're fighting each other, right? It's very true. The, the government or the world wants to divide and conquer and they're successfully doing it. You know? Right. So, and we yeah. and we help them out. We we help them out we <laughs> by do. fighting yeah. amongst ourselves. Exactly. So that's why you have to put your lipstick on. You have to put the prettiest dress you have on, and you have to go out, and you have to smile, and you have to know that you're an equal amongst everybody that you walk amongst. Otherwise. They're gonna crush you, and I do it. I do it, and there are women here who are a lot braver than me, who flaunted a lot more than me, who are a lot more flamboyant than I am. Yeah. And and they get beat up, and they get assaulted, they get raped, they get arrested, they get this, everything, and then and they go out the next day and they do the same again, and they do it again, and they do it again, and they do it again. And I don't think, they don't think for a second, maybe I made a mistake, maybe. They just, they just go out and do it, because. Be if you can't because be Because they're just being who they are, right. And if, yeah, exactly. And if you can't be yourself, then there's no point. And, and they've won. They've right, won. the other, the other, the other, the opponents have won, whoever they are. <laughs> Exactly, and they the want, detractors win. The the people who do this, they are um, enablers of dishonesty, because yeah. they want everybody to go around and live a lie. That's what they yes. want. Yes. And 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 as long as you know, for me, for my own personal background, I was before I transitioned, I was very. I had a stiff upper lip, I was very regimented, I was very, mm -hmm. s not stern, but I was very disciplined, and kind of the archetypal, <laughs> the archetypal, like, masculine, like, a man's man. Right? Sure. And it was completely manufactured by me. It was, right. The, it was completely... It was a lie. I lied to everybody I came across when I said hello mm -hmm. to them, because yes, because it was what I thought the world wanted of me and expected of me. Mm -hmm. 
my parents knew I was lying, you know, if my family knew I was lying, but for me it was taking the safe road for a long time, and now, even though I'm not this safe, I feel so much better within myself. Right. And that's kind of the balance of that. Like, do you feel like shit for safety or do you feel great for being unsafe? I think the latter. For me. Right. Right. Uh, it was it was a point I was going to try to make, but I'm glad you made it. I'm glad you made it the way you did. Cause, ask, yes. ask me a question. <laughs> ask you a question. Yeah. Um, What are you going to do after this? What am I going to do after this? Um, probably take a walk. And, and be proud of who you are. <laughs> yeah. I'm always proud of who I am. Um, it sounds very arrogant and very narcissistic, but I'm no. completely in love with myself. <laughs> well, no. Wear your reddest lipstick, okay? When you when you take a walk. Yeah, I do, I do, and good. And I make. I have a tendency of making like the very. Um, I say conservative, they're not really, but the Muslim women in the neighborhood, who, kind of hate to love us and love to hate us at the same time who I walk past them and I always smile at them and I always say hello to them and <laughs> their reaction just kind of fuels me from the rest of the day <laughs> because I remember it was it was two days ago or something I was walking past one and I said good morning and and she kind of hissed at me like a snake. Oh my gosh. And, and then her friend goes, yeah, yeah, she must be, and I'm quoting, yeah, she must be a freak, but my God, isn't she gorgeous? Right. <laughs> I was like, I just laughed. I laughed at it because why, why you say things like that when you know you love me, you shouldn't say it. Mm -hmm. Just, right. just open your arms and I'll give you a hug. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna come into your house. I'm not gonna eat your children. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna harm anything in your family because I don't care what you do. But right. I will be polite with you and I will always be polite to anybody, even if they're not polite to me. Right. So to answer your question, I will walk out of here and. I'll say good morning to somebody I know doesn't like me. And I'll go for a walk. I sit in park. And I'll think about the conversation. And I think about how appallingly I did in the <laughs> podcast. Oh no. <laughs> I can't I can't I can't string sentences together. Oh cut it out. Um I I cannot thank you enough, I think, for 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 the the, the past conversation. Um I will fight for you, sister. You are Enough beautiful fight. and you know it. Thank you. You're beautiful. I'm okay. No. No, I, I'm not gonna let you have that. <laughs> I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna let you have that. You I'm trying beautiful. to make this, but this is about you. I don't want it to be about me. I. <laughs> Isn't it about both of us? It's about Isn't our it? community. You're right. Exactly. You're right. You've said that twice now, and twice I've forgotten it. You're gonna have to so, send that to me in an email a couple of times a day. Yeah, along with put your pride on the fucking shelf and accept that you're a beautiful soul and that a beautiful person, a beautiful woman 
and you're happy. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Much happier. Much happier. There's definitely no doubt that living living in, in, in whatever danger I've got is, is far preferable to, to dying in, in safety, I think is how you put it. It's yeah. very well put. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm completely honest. Uh, I, you are an inspiration. I, that's not a, it's not a, um, it's not hyperbole. It's not, it, it's absolute truth. I, I read what you write, you tell me how you live and, and you're an absolute inspiration. And I hope to, you know, maybe someday I'll, I'll, I'll reach your level of bravery and your level of, 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 um, just, you know, wonderful. I ran out of words. Do you remember you were saying you were going to sit in the park and, and think of how appalling, appallingly you did? Mm -hmm. That was it. I was trying to make a great statement and, and ended with wonderfulness and, and, uh, you, you touch me. That's the sure. Thank you. Thank you. You touch me. Thanks. Um, I will, I will get this to whomever I can because I, I want you to be heard. So. Well, I mean, perhaps one day you will have, um, other people on the show from Turkey, maybe my friends. I hope. Who can, who can speak English, who will give you better, uh, experience of childhood. In Turkey than I can. But All the voices I can amplify. Mm -hmm. Please <laughs> send them. Send them this way. Your microphone. That's you what mean, I want to be. You are. Me talking to you and our voices get put out into the air. Yes. You must sleep now. So, so if for for anybody, anybody listening there, yeah, I we started this conversation at at two a.m. my time here in here in Mountain Time, but uh, um, I am honored that I got the opportunity to that you spent this much time with me. Very honored, um, Doro. Thank you so much. Um, You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, uh, in Turkish, it is hoş geldiniz. Means you're welcome. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. I love the language, by the way. It's just the the look of it mm. is just beautiful. I, Isn't it? It is. <laughs> it sounds beautiful too. Can can you will you say something? It doesn't. I don't even. I'm not even sure what you're gonna say, but just. Have a nice day. I don't care. Have a nice day. It's morning. <laughs> yes, it's, whatever. It's, it's morning there now, no? Um, Early at this point, morning. yeah, it's th three in the morning. Yeah, it's three a.m. But good night, then. Good night, then. Means good morning. Or okay. good night. Good night, Ian. Good shalom. Perfect. Means, means good night. I'm having trouble knowing which one. To to give you because I could say good morning and I could say good night. Yeah, I don't even know because at this point I think I'm a little and, bit loopy from the conversation. So, and chok 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 tishikulas, which means thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Chok, very, very, so chok very, means uh... tishikula means thank you, and chok means like much, oh, very okay, so, much. All right, so, said in reverse, you see. <laughs> right. I'll, I'll I'll brush up on this so next time we talk I will have it. Mm -hmm. All of right. Yeah, brush up. <laughs> I will. I'll get a book. Get a book. Get so, an audio book. I will. I'm. Se I would do this. I'm serious. I love languages, you know. So. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. Well, thank you again, sister. No, you're welcome. Thank you.